represent the biologist's ultimate dream, a chance to see physical evidence for the origins of all species. Half a billion years ago, these mountains were nothing more than mud at the bottom of the sea. Since that time, the seafloor has been transformed into a compacted, hardened rock called shale. Each layer is a slice of that first living world, frozen in time. When we think of fossils, we think of dinosaurs. Yet for Des, these fossils are infinitely more important. They are five times older, and every animal that ever walked the earth, swam in the sea, or flew in the air, has its origins here. The British shell fossils re represent the beginning of everything, right? That this is our first good look at animal life soon after it evolved. Uh, and that's because of the exquisite preservation of these things. So what it sh it's showing you what life was like uh, when it was first evolved, and it's showing you the complete range of life at that particular time. And that's the life from which everything else has since evolved. You see the slab, Des? Yeah. Des's years of experience mean that he can make sense of fossils that to most people look like shadows in the rock. And look at this guy here, you can see the, the tail sticking out of that one. These are the armored bugs, Canadaspis, that once filled the Cambrian oceans, believed to be the ancestor of many modern insects. This is hallucinogenia, a creature so weird it was inspired by the term hallucination, yet it's the ancestor of many kinds of worm. This five-eyed freak is Apabinia, another bug ancestor. Without this unique collection of fossils, scientists would still be in the dark about the true origins of every animal species on Earth, and that includes us. Perhaps the most important find here in the Burgess Shale is a tiny sliver of fossilized flesh called Pekaya. Amazingly, it is this frail-looking specimen which has been identified as our first, most distant ancestor. This is Pekaya. It's about uh, two to three centimeters long. It has along the back here this cord-like structure which is related to our spinal cord in here. And the descendants of this then developed a backbone uh, and, and a bony skeleton, and of course the first ones uh, that, were, that were successful were the fishes, and then from the fishes evolved the, the amphibians, the reptiles, the mammals and birds, and of course ultimately us. We're the, just the latest development of this whole succession of evolutionary changes, which began with this little guy here, Bakaya, here in the Burgess Shale. And of course, if this thing hadn't survived, then we wouldn't be around anyway, so it's very important to us. It has taken half a billion years for us to evolve from this humble creature, an uninterrupted journey of evolution, but a journey fraught with danger. Now for the first time, scientists are realizing how unlikely it was that we would even make it past the first bend in the evolutionary race. We always have the advantage of looking back in retrospect. We know what ultimately happened. So if you then trace it back and say, okay, could you predict that what happened would happen? Well, there's, there's no way. Who would pick this little wormy thing? You would never pick Pakaya if you were a bookmaker. This guy's a, a thousand to one odds, you know, and you throw on your way the money if you, if, you, if, you, if you could bet on it. Although Pakaya had the beginnings of a spinal cord, as yet he had no bony skeleton, no teeth or claws. He was utterly defenseless. One of the great mysteries of the Burgess Shale is how Pekaya managed to survive in a hostile world. Because for the first time, scientists are able to picture quite how hostile it was. Here at the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, all the fossils collected in recent years from the Burgess Shale have been brought for analysis. At last count, they had 120,000 specimens, covering 200 species, each one preserved in incredible detail. 
Among the countless fossil fragments, they found compelling evidence for the first victims of a giant serial killer which stalked the Cambrian seas. A monster predator capable of making mincemeat of anything. Des Collins has turned forensic scientist, examining the body of a typical victim. A, a, a fairly large arthropod here called Helmetia. This would have been fairly flat. Uh, and it probably it's got two big eyes at the front, so it was probably buried with the eyes sticking up sort of like a place, a fish today. Uh, um, but then we find specimens with great big bites. There's the one here with a huge bite taken out of it. And this is associated with, uh, this is associated with giant predators. Uh, there's the shape as the eyes in the middle, and there's a big bite taken right out of the, of the carapace of this thing. So there's only a little bit of it left in here. So this obviously was a, a lethal bite on this animal. It must have been good to eat. The only clues to the killer's identity were a set of circular jaws and several pairs of disembodied claws. But for years, they had no idea what they belonged to. Then in the early 90s, Des led a party to the Burgess Shale, which uncovered the first complete specimen. We all took a picture of us all sitting together, just with the fossils, so we all sort of grouped around this, just to sort of see it, because it, was, because it showed so much that we hadn't seen before. And the guys had been working there all, you know, for two months, and we had bits and pieces, and then suddenly, complete one. They could finally build a complete profile of the serial killer. a predator they called Anomalocaris, the T-Rex of the Burgess Shale. It swam around with its head pulled back in, its claws retracted, just cruising around. It got these two big eyes on stalks, would see its prey, would dive in. And as just as it got, they would unroll the claws, reach out and grab, and then, and then tear the thing to pieces. For a top predator, survival meant constant hunting. And anything, however big or small, was fair game. Once spotted in the open, the chances of escape for this solitary Olenoides were zero. Overwhelming size and power put a swift end to the chase. And the hard jaws and vice-like claws would make short work of dismembering the armored bug. Des has found startling evidence to show quite how big these monsters could get. We have this specimen here, and you can see the, uh, the huge claws of these are almost a foot long. So you're talking about an animal that's probably up to four or five feet, four or five feet long. So it's much bigger than everything else in the Burgess Shale. This was the, the major predatory group in the Cambrian period half, half a billion years ago, the first major predatory group on Earth. Hunting in the oceans today follows the same strategies invented half a billion years ago by these animals. Stalking, evasion, camouflage, and surprise attack all started here. And the pioneers all belong to one group. From the watching five-eyed scavengers like Apabinia to the monster predators like Anomalocaris, right down to the Olenoides scurrying about on the sea floor, the oceans at this time were dominated by one group of animals. 